the dark night of the soul mirrors depression. It looks like depression. The symptoms are the same. Hello there, it's Mandy Woodard, and this is Courageous Conversations. The show is all about our life journey and the growing and healing we go through. Sometimes it takes great courage to step out of where we are and choose a different path. I started this show because I wanted you to know that you are not alone, no matter where you are in your life journey. And my hope is that you will hear a story that I share or a conversation that I have and you will get something out of it. You will have an aha moment or a realization and you'll know what you need to do because it is my belief that we are all here to help each other grow and become the best version of ourselves and find what our purpose is. So thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. Let's get started. Hi, my friend. Welcome to the podcast, either back or for the first time, whichever it might be for you. Um, It's episode 39, and I am posting it on September 26, 2023, just for reference. But I am super excited for you to hear this episode. I actually recorded it a few weeks ago, and as I listened back this morning to pull it together and get it edited and ready to put out, I realized I really needed to hear it myself. And it's funny how that happens. And I talk about going into waves and highs and lows. And it's not that I'm in a low right now. I wouldn't say that at all, but I have been challenged recently. And I'm I'm finding that I needed to hear everything that I had said, everything that I had said. And my hope is that you do too, even if it's just one thing, not everything, whatever it is, it's all good. It's okay. I want to say a couple things though. First, a couple announcements is one, I am hosting a nourish your soul Reiki healing class, October 8th. So if you are local to me and you are interested in that, you can shoot me an email at hello at lionartcoachingco.com. And we can talk more about that. And I can send you the link to get your ticket for that spot, but you will leave Reiki one certified level one certified, which means you'll be able to do Reiki on yourself, but it is more than just learning Reiki. It is learning how to walk yourself through that healing journey. And I love being able to offer that and teach it. It's one of my favorite things. So if you feel called to join me, I hope you will listen to that because you know, when it's your time, you know, when it's time for you to do something like that. The next thing I want to say is just a little exciting update. I have been sharing an office space with my dear, dear friend who I hope to have on the podcast very soon for the last year and a half. And it started in April of 2022. I needed a space to be able to see clients in person. And it just happened to work out that I ended up in there. And so one day a week, I saw clients in person in her space. Like I would use her space that she typically would use. So we'd have to swap out the time that we were there. We'd do alternate days. And by the fall last year, I was ready for my own room to create my own space. And so I moved into this tiny little office right next to hers. And we still shared our treatment room where we would do the energy healing on alternate days. And she does our Vigo therapy, which is a form of massage. It's a beautiful practice and I'm not going to go into it because I want her to explain it when she comes. But, but now I am at this place where I really want to be able to be in more than just one day a week and sometimes two, sometimes three, whatever my energy will allow for. And I have more clients and I want to be able to accommodate seeing them. So I have moved into the front part of the office And a lot of my clients knew this was coming. I talked about this probably starting in the summertime. So for a while, it's been like, are you not in the new room yet? Are you not in the new room yet? And I'm so excited to say that we are now in the new room. And I'm, I'm really grateful, really grateful. 
when I was driving to my office from my house, it's about a 30 minute drive. I was thinking about my journey. I was thinking about my clients and I just really started crying. (laughs) I mean, I am a tearful person anyway, but really they were true tears of happiness. And I wanted to share that win with you guys. I wanted you to be able to celebrate with me and Thank you for being here. We've reached a year with the podcast. I have a lot of phenomenal guests lined up for the fall and I'm just, I'm so grateful. So grateful. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and just let you know, I was in such a beautiful space when I recorded this and I hope that it serves you. I hope that it really finds you and is a little bit of a light because it was a light for me today. I, I needed to hear it. All right, here's my courageous conversation talking about the dark night of the soul. Before I jump in, I want to say this. I'm just in such this gooey, lovey, grateful energy today, and I want to spill that over onto you. I really believe our energy is contagious, and sometimes in a not so good way, and that's when we need to talk about shielding and protecting ourselves, but I would love for you if you feel called to just kind of take some deep breaths in before you dive into this episode and absorb that goodness, that loving energy, because it's pouring out of me right now. So let's go ahead. Let's together, let's breathe in through our nose and then out through our mouth. And I want you to breathe at a pace that feels good for you. I'm in this space because I just got a text message from a client and this is not out of the ordinary. I get messages all the time from my clients and it is, wow, that thing that we talked about has become a reality and it's an excitement. It's, it's a beautiful thing. It's that thing that was channeled in their energy healing session has now become true. And so I'll get this message of, uh, well, you were right. (laughs) And I, I look at that and I just, I personally thank God is what I do because it's not about me. It wasn't me that was right. I was just the conduit. I was just the receiver that then got to share the information. And it's because A year and a half ago, I asked God to use me, give me the words, bring the people to me that need to come to me and hear the message that's waiting for them, that they haven't been able to hear themselves. And sometimes that happens in really interesting places, (laughs) like a workout class for an instructor. (laughs) And I don't know if I've told that story on here, but it was one of those moments where I, I literally said that morning in a prayer meditation, Reiki meditation, I asked God to use me who needs to receive a message today. And when I went to my workout class, I got a message for the instructor and I was battling with God the entire time. Like, no, not here, not this place. This is weird. I didn't even know her. I didn't even know the instructor. I <laughs> I was like, she is going to think I am so crazy. So I argued with God the entire class. And then at the end, towards the end, I was like, okay, you want me to say to her what needs to be said, make a way, make it possible. And I am normally not the last person in a room. I'm I'm usually out first because I'm one of the first to go get the stuff to get cleaning and like clean my stuff up and get going. And I still was that day. I was one of the first to go get my wipe and, and get everything wiped down. And all of a sudden I looked up though and there was no one else in the room. It was the one day there wasn't 
three different people trying to talk to the instructor after class. So I said, okay, I see you. I'll do it. And I'll be damned if it wasn't something that she really needed to hear. And I won't go into the details of it because it was so personal and, and that's fine. We don't need to hear all the details of it. It's just that I called this in and I specifically asked God to show me what I needed to see, to bring people to whatever it is that I have, whether it's the podcast or Instagram or my office or just out and about. And I will answer. I will discern and share. So I just, I get these messages and I laugh and and get so giddy and excited. And I just had a moment of complete ugly crying because I was filled with so much gratitude. And just thanks. Thank you for trusting me and allowing me to be part of this person's soul journey because I don't take that lightly at all. I don't take it lightly at all. I don't take this podcast lightly at all. I have fun with it. It's something so fun that I get to do and the energy is light. I definitely take this seriously. I spend so much time planning and prepping and thinking about what I want to share And when I don't do that, when I do just kind of roll out an episode, the energy feels different and maybe it doesn't for you, but it does for me. But today, today's conversation, oh man, this has been brewing. It's been brewing all week and it's divinely come to me and in multiple ways, like, hey, this is what needs to be said today. This is what needs to be shared. So I've titled this, I believe I'll title this, The Dark Night of the Soul. And it is what we're going to talk about. But I kind of just want to roll through this a little more freely with you. I have (laughs) my big whiteboard across from me and all my notes. And uh, we'll see. We'll see how it all comes together. But I want to tell you a story about something recently that's happened. So... I had a card reading with a friend that I met through a through a coaching program that I've been working through. She lives in Portland, so it was virtual. And I'm going to say a couple things first. If you hear the words card reading and feel shut down, I am going to ask you to just hold space for a moment to decide if you want to be open to hearing the rest of this and then proceed or don't. You listen to your own intuition. You discern what you need to discern. But I've seen a lot of stuff circulating lately, of course, where it's portrayed in such a negative light. And here's what I'm going to say. Everything is energy. And the intention behind the thing is what matters. Money is energy. Money is a physical thing, but the intention behind it, the energetic exchange that comes with money, it is the same with cards. What is the intention? Money is not evil. What the person who's holding the money intends to do with it, that is where the energy lies. The card and the reading, what is the intention behind what's happening? I am going to vow to you and make this promise to you that I will only ever do things that are in light and love. Only ever. And I am an energy practitioner and I call in whatever modality it is, I ask God to lead the way. So whether I feel called to use a crystal 
in a, in a healing session or pull a tarot card in a healing session. It's all with the same energy. It's light and love. So I don't want to change your belief system, but I want to challenge you and ask, why do you believe what you believe? And if it's because somebody else told you that that's what you should believe, then that's what I want to challenge. Because what do you feel deep inside? What feels right to you? And kind of just sit with that. So back to my story, not to get so sidetracked, but I really felt like that was important to say. I had this card reading done with my friend in Portland, and it was with a deck of cards that her dad created in the 70s. They're not tarot, but it's kind of tarot, kind of oracle type style. And as she laid out the cards and it was what's behind me, where I currently am and what's before me, and I could see the cycle and where I was, I could see that. Yeah, that's true. That's very accurate. And yeah, like this is where I'm heading into if I'm not already one to two steps into this thing. And as we're talking and I'm talking to her about my clients and um, not specifically anybody, but just like my work and how I operate and what I do and what I want to do, she said, do you see? This is also your client's journey. This is the journey you walk through with your clients. Like this is where they are when they come to you. And this is where you're walking them through. And all of a sudden it was like the clouds parted and I could see miles and miles and miles ahead. This light bulb just went off. And then when I was in my sessions the next day, it came up, the path came up and it became extremely clear where I was with each of my clients that day. So the first card was the sea and it's this picture of the ocean, but it's, it's a graphic, so not an actual photo, but it shows the depths of the ocean that takes up the majority of the card. And when I saw that card, I immediately thought about how deeply I feel things and how I have felt like I was in the bottom of the ocean. So many times in my life have I felt like I was in the bottom of the ocean, even if I was in denial in the moment. But there have been times where it's clear, ooh, Mandy is in a low place. And I'll even say it. I'll say it to my husband. I'm deep. I'm deep in the hole right now and I can feel it. And it almost brings tears to my eyes to just think about it because I know it's so real. It's so real to be there. But that's the start. That's the past that I had. And not to say that I might not feel that again. Like we all have lows, highs and lows, no matter where we are in our journey, it it can come back around. And it's usually because the cycle is about to begin again. There's something new to learn here. But I can tell you, like, that's where my clients are pretty much when they come to me, most of them. And they need to be able to go into that next phase. And the next card was the cup. It was an empty cup. And it's that need to fill it. And that's where I would call it, we've got to find what lights you up. What is the life force? Where are you giving your life force? Now, I'm not going to talk about the entire spread. I feel called to just stop there because that is what's most relevant to the conversation today. So that deep, deep ocean the depths of the ocean, I 100% connect that to the dark night of the soul and being in that space. 
And I had never heard of this before. It's become a trendy topic and you might see it on reels or things like that now or talking about the awakening. Brene Brown talked very openly about the awakening that she had, that moment when she just was like, whoa, everything is falling apart. And we have these, we all have these moments in our lives. Uh, Sometimes people resist them. Sometimes that awakening, that dark night of the soul is resisted. And those are the people that seem like their energy is just stuck in the mud, like they can't move forward and nothing will ever change and everything is happening to them and everything always goes wrong. Life is so negative. That's, that's in my opinion, this is my opinion, those are the people that are resisting allowing that soul growth. But learning this, learning about the dark night of the soul changed everything for me. Because I did not know what it was. And when I learned about it, I learned about it from Caroline Miss, who I highlight a lot on here. I love her work. You can go to miss.com, M-Y-S-S, if you want to check her stuff out. But I learned about it from her in a series on Gaia. And as she's talking and describing, it was like, wait a second. I feel that wait a second, I've been there, hold on, hold on, whoa, whoa. It was like light bulb after light bulb after light bulb. And I didn't realize that that's what I was experiencing. And maybe you don't realize that that's what you're experiencing. And I don't think we do. When we first come into that space, we don't realize that that's what's happening. A lot of times we think there's something wrong with us. In fact, society would tell you that you just have anxiety or you just have depression. And my God, do not, oh my God, don't interpret that like I am saying you don't. Please, please, please. This is not medical advice. Know that. Like, know your situation is different. I'm not going to go back on what your doctor said, but I'm going to tell you that most of the time, the anxiety and the depression we feel is because we are out of alignment and it is your body and the universe and divine and God and all the things talking to you. It's talking to you. The dark night of the soul mirrors depression. It looks like depression. The symptoms are the same. There's neurological depression and then there is the dark night of the soul. And it is up to you to discern what it is for you. Which is it for you? Depression equals deep rest. Your body is craving rest. It's craving something different. It's not just your body. It's your soul. Your soul needs a shift and a change. And it's just, it's calling you into that space so that you can discern your soul has made the decision that enough is enough. We're not pushing anymore. We're not doing this anymore. It kind of can look like burnout. You know, like we try to push ourselves so hard and then we just burn out. I recently learned about Joseph Campbell. I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but I had uh, somebody, I had somebody tell me about him. So I looked him up and he is the one who I believe coined the phrase, the hero's journey. I actually think that he worked with the guy that wrote the star Wars series because he was a psychologist or I think he was a psychologist, but he was an American writer. I do know that. And he talked about this, how we all go through this hero's journey It's that realization, though, that you have something to learn. You have something you need to grow through. And what triggers it is different for everybody. 
Sometimes it's an extreme emotional event that happens. And sometimes it's just your computer is frozen and you're almost dropped the F-bomb. I try not to in case, you know, you've got little kids around. <laughs> uh, you're, you're like fed up. That's all. You're fed up and you can't take it anymore. I'll be so honest with you. That was the trigger of my panic attack back over a decade ago that led me into the healing space. I was so terrified to go see a therapist. I thought for sure somebody would lock me up in a padded room if they knew what was going on in my head. And uh, I never wanted to talk to anybody. And then I got this referral for somebody who is more holistic and doesn't diagnose. I thought, okay, I'll give her a shot. I'll give her a try. And it changed my life. Her approach was so different. And I think that there was so much in what she did that has influenced the way that I operate. But that fear of getting help crippled me. But when this happened, I actually thought I was having a heart attack. And I ended up going to the emergency room and they said, no, honey, you're having a panic attack. And well, they said, well, what's happening? What what were you doing? And they asked if I was in college because I was like young 20s. And um, I'm like, no, I've got two kids and a business. <laughs> I'm trying to build a house right now and moved back home. And uh, it's just a lot of stress, I guess. And it wasn't all those things that were happening. It was the buildup of all the things before that had been avoided. And I never got to process and heal. It, it's an energetic thing though. And the energy will get stuck in your body. It will. And that's when you have these panic attacks. That's when you end up with sickness. So I wanted to talk about how to get through this, how to get through that dark night of the soul is One, just see, like, ask yourself, is this what I'm experiencing? And are, am I holding on to things that I need to let go of? Like what's draining your energy? The number one thing though, is to surrender, to surrender and say, all right, I'm here. I'm ready to learn. And then start feeding your soul. You have to ask, what does your soul want? Start questioning the beliefs that you carry. Like this rule book. We all carry around this thick rule book. Like this is this and this is this and yada, yada, yada and down the line. I want you to like, I want you to dive into that rule book that you've created that you probably don't even realize you created it. And a A big secret to like finding out what rules you've written is look at everywhere your energy is going. Like if somebody cuts you off on the road, how long do you stay mad at that? If somebody is disrespectful to you at work or wherever, how long are you holding on to that? And then work backwards to find the root. If you're getting upset over a post you're seeing on the internet because of a political comment that's made or a religious comment that's made, or you're seeing something like the card or the Reiki or the whatever, and it's triggering you to feel like you feel so strong in that, that's an energy leak. You got to see where those are in order to come back in alignment with yourself. Because the purpose of the dark night of the soul, the purpose of this great awakening is to bring you back to yourself, your truest, most authentic version of you. What are the masks you're wearing? Are you a people pleaser? That's a mask. And your outer world is a reflection of your inner world. And the longer you resist this, the longer you will suffer. I'm just saying it like it is. The longer you resist the call 
the longer you will suffer. The more you ignore the signs, the more you brush things off like that was just a coincidence, the longer it is. I know people in that, that resist this. Like, I can see it. <laughs> and I don't say anything. This is one of the things where we don't need to always speak up without, especially for me, I'm a projector. I need an invitation. You know, I, I have to discern. But I can see where an, someone's outer world is a direct reflection of what's happening inside and their resistance to heal. They are resisting that surrendering process, that openness, that divine guidance that might be coming through. And, and they spend their time, and this is not a judgment, it's just what is. It's There's time spent asking, why does this always happen to me? You stub your toe. Why do I always stub my toe? You get another bill in the mail. Why am I always bleeding money? You have car troubles. I mean, the list goes on. All these things happen. And the question is, why is this always happening to me? And the shift comes when the question changes from why to help me learn from this. It's that you surrender to God and say, God, help me learn from this. What am I needing to see? What's the pattern? What's the cycle that's repeating? When you can zoom out and see the cycles, you then have so much power because you can see what needs to change. And this leads me into the next thing that I really want to tell you is you have a choice. You get to decide what is possible. And what you decide is possible will happen. Like, this was the thing that really led me into this space. And in 2017, I recorded a video for the trailer for the Amanda Hoyle show the show I did on YouTube. And I said, I am fascinated with the idea that some people can come from the worst of the worst, absolutely nothing. And they build these amazing businesses and help all these people, or they become athletes or movie stars or singers They don't allow their past or their circumstances to hinder their future. They decided that they wanted better and they went out and got it. They decided what was possible and then they made it happen. Where there's other people who have everything that they could ever want. They're not starting way behind the line. And they do nothing. And it's not an insult. That's their soul's journey. That's just, it is life. We see it all the time. But the point is, you have a choice. You can either be bitter or get better. Have you ever heard of the analogy? I think I've probably even said it here. It's like these twin brothers were raised by an alcoholic. One grew up to become an alcoholic and the other grew up to never touch a drop of alcohol. What's the difference between the two of them? It's the choice that they made. It's the decision that they made. That's the difference. And their soul's journey is different also, but... (laughs) Ultimately, we get to decide. And when we resist the healing, when we resist the growth and the call of the divine, our outer world reflects our inner world. And here's the thing. Sometimes we can't change a situation. And if you can't change a situation, you have to change your perspective. Like You must. You must change your perspective. You can't control everything. You cannot control all the situations. 
You can't control if you are renting a home and all of a sudden the landlord is saying, I need to sell this place, find somewhere else to live. You can get frazzled and freak out and panic or you can get real creative with your thinking and say, okay, what can we do? Where can we go? Trust. Surrender. Ask for guidance. It's always there. It's always there. Are you in a fog though? Are you in a fog? Do you need your clouds to part that are surrounding your head? There's so much power in your words. And if you're not using the right words, you're going to keep yourself stuck in that fog. There's not going to be a clearing. But the path is going to become more and more clear with every step you take. Every step, it's going to become more clear. But you have to use healing words. I have this rule with my kids and also now my clients, some of my clients, I've been saying this to them lately. If I hear one negative thing out of your mouth about yourself, you better tell me three positives right after. You're not allowed to say something bad about yourself. You're not. How are you talking about yourself? How are you referring to your situation and what's happening? You have to change your vocabulary because your word is everything. And there is energy in our words. Just like there's energy in that money I talked about earlier. And just like there's energy in the cards. What are your intentions? How are you talking about yourself? We have to use the right words if we want to heal. Start changing that vocabulary. Start catching that. Because listen, as you become aware, as you become more self-aware, you then start to take responsibility And responsibility breeds empowerment. You're then empowered to go out and make good choices for yourself. You're going to choose to look at things differently. You're going to make the choice to surrender. You're going to make the choice to heal. You get to choose to lean into forgiveness. Because what are you attaching your energy to? There, this is a weight and you have to let it go. Release that thing. Release that person. Set them free. Forgive them for yourself, not for them. Forgiving somebody is not excusing behavior. It's not saying what they did is okay. It's you Releasing that energetic weight from yourself. And it's vital. It's vital to our journey. It's vital to our process. And it's a huge part of the dark night of the soul. And and being in that space and being in the depths of the sea and, and feeling like that's where you are. It's like in order to come up from the bottom of the sea, These are the things that you need to do. And in no particular order and no particular timeline. When you feel ready. And one is surrender. Two is evaluate your beliefs. Three is evaluate your energy and where it's being drained. And then the 3B would be lean into the forgiveness aspect. Four is make a choice. Five, and maybe four is like integrated into all of these, to be honest with you. Maybe it starts with the choice and then it's surrender. Or it's the choice to surrender. It's the choice to question your beliefs. It's the choice to look at your energy. And then five is what feeds your soul. Find what feeds your soul. What do you love to do? What lights you up? What's the thing you can get lost in and feel energized? Do that. Fill your cup up. Stop putting everybody else first. Fill your cup up so you can fill other people's cups up. 
And sometimes helping other people does fill our cup. But there's a balance. Of course, there's a, not necessarily a balance, but maybe like, I love the yin and yang because it's not an equal slice down the middle. It's a, a little up here, a little down here. It's, that's what I mean when I'm talking about balance. I love something I heard Caroline say though, Caroline Miss. And it's, we've reached the point in our evolution where we really need to utilize the power of the light that's in ourselves. And she said, I have this quote on my website. She says, it takes very little light to make a difference, but you're not going to find, it's, it's like you have to start swimming to the surface. You might only see a glimmer of the light at the surface of the ocean. Then you're down deep in the sea. Just start swimming towards that pin drop amount of light. Because it will get bigger and bigger and bigger. And as you come up to that surface, you're then up there and you are this light. And sometimes, if we're lucky, we get to be that for someone else. So as your light then shines, someone can start swimming to the surface. But I want you to do this. Go seek the truth. Go out on this mission to find what's true for you. And how do you, how are you creating your reality? And open your heart, open your mind to the idea that God is always speaking to you. The divine is always speaking to you and through you. I know that it is intimidating to go on a healing journey. I know it is. Hard stuff comes up. But I want you to know this also. That extreme part of the emotion is only going to last 60 to 90 seconds. And then the lingering effects, that's the story you're telling yourself that's hanging around. And that's the part that you get to process and make a choice to change. Change the perspective. Just know, like, the suffering is optional. Life is not always fair. And bad shit happens to good people. But you get to choose how you move forward in this world. And you get to choose if you're going to resist. Are you going to resist your awakening? (laughs) Maybe you're in this place right now. Maybe you're out of it. Even if you're out of this place, out of that dark night of the soul, you could maybe take the time to reflect back on that time of your life. And kind of recalibrate and ask yourself, am I being a light? Am I being a light? All right, my friend. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. If you found value in this, I would be so grateful if you shared. Maybe you have somebody that popped into your mind as you listened and thought, gosh, I really need to send this to her or him. Or even if you want to give me a little shout out on social media, I would be so grateful. But I want you to know this. I want you to always remember this. No matter where you are in your journey, know that you are loved, you are valued, and you are appreciated. Bye now.